purposes and sanitation for all by 2030, mm. making water a key issue in the fight to eradicate extreme poverty. But 783 million people do not have access to clean and safe water worldwide. Let's make this report on the hardship some Lagosians in Nigeria face to access portable water. Water is one of life's most essential commodity. Access to safe and clean water is crucial to elderly living. Little wonder everyone makes an extra effort to get water. With a population of close to 20 million Nigerians, access to water has become very difficult in Lagos. The state government recently announced that it requires about 720 million gallons of water daily for the teeming population of Lagos, but has the capacity to provide only 210 million gallons. This shortage has left a huge percentage of Lagos residents in their need of potable water. When TVC News visited Ojota, Isolo, Ogba and Ikorodu areas in Lagos, most communities only had songs of lamentations. Years of lack of access to water means they have to resort to self-help. We know I have water since last year in our area. And the worst of all, there was one day I was here in my shop. I, I saw those people, they came with their bill. But lo and behold, I said, don't drop that bill. You have to go back with it. Because for the past two years, we've not seen water. Abesson Estate in Ekbaja is easily one of the most densely populated estates in Alimosho local government area. But it is also plagued by a unique problem. Years of pipeline vandalism has ensured that water in this area is contaminated, rendering their boreholes useless. If you pump out anything, it's, it's going to be a mixture of petrol and uh, water, and which is not useful for the consumption, neither for any other usage. In 2016, the Lagos State Government inaugurated the Mosson Kuala Mini Waterworks to meet the needs of residents of Abesson, Barua and neighboring communities. More than a year after, the residents say they still do not have access to public water. Officials of the Lagos State Water Corporation say they are not ignorant of the pains of Lagos residents. The um, population increase in Lagos is making it very difficult for a lot of services to get to too many of our people. But we are doing a whole lot. They are sure that water will get to every household in 2020, but one that residents must be careful to avoid wasting water. You'll be surprised when you get to some household. They will run their tap 24 hours, running 24 hours. With a deficit of 500 million gallons daily and a proposed year 2020 for water for every Lagos household, Lagos residents may still have to cope with three more painful years looking for potable water for their use. Jokeli Jadu, TVC News, Lagos. Well, with us in the studio is Ido Salawo, an environmentalist, to talk about the challenges many Nigerians are facing in getting access to portable water. Good morning to you. Now, the theme for World Water Day for this year uh, in March was Why Waste Water? Clean water prevents diarrhea and saves life. But then, is portable water accessible to all? No. From that report, you can see that population keep growing every mm. day. I have been hearing of water for all by the year 2000, housing for all by the year 2000. What's going on? It, we have passed year 2000, maybe in the last 17 years, so we still have, don't have that water. So, should we tell the people in government are not paying attention to this? And they keep campaigning. We we'll give you water, we we'll give you light, we we'll give you this. So, what's happening? Is it capital intensive? Yes. If the population is increasing, and this is what I always say to people, lack of planning. In the other clam, what they normally do before you even construct your house, they make sure that this facility is already there. It's one of the factors that will make you to go and settle in a place. There is water, there is electricity, there is road. But in our own case, this facility, uh, your infrastructure will be there before the water comes in. Mm -hmm. So the, the question is we don't have access to water. And let's look at the sources of this water. We have the fresh water. The fresh water is made up about 2.5% of the total water body in the world. And sources of, one of the sources of water is from the fresh water. The other one is underground water. The other one is rain. And Lagos is surrounded by water. So where are the water? Mm. The lagoon is heavily polluted. They can't treat lagoon. So Lagos has to be treating water from Ogun State, Ogun River. 
The first water treatment plant was constructed in 1915 to serve the, people, the colonial master in Ikoi, about 2.4 million gallons per day. Later on, when population started increasing, they start planning. They had it at the end, in the 70s. Mm. Between 1950 and the 70s, 50s, 60s, 70s, they added at the end, which increases the water uh, uh, quantity to about 70 million gallons per day. Between 70 and 80, they added min seven mini water works to serve the people as the population is growing. So what happened to this successful government? What have they been doing? So that is why people will be saying there is no access to water. Because, in fact, in the whole Nigeria, about f only four states meet the ranking system of the global water supply based on the policy of water. And don't forget, the instrument that we have for water supply from government, that's the, the, we talk of law now, federal government is responsible for major water body, management of major water body, the rivers, the oceans, and this. Then the state and local government are to provide water for, their, for the need of the, of the populace. Exactly. So the problem is who is making planning every year in and out for budgeting for water infrastructure? Because we have decay infrastructure in, in water supply. And investment provider from the report I did for World Bank in 2005, when Lagos was about uh, uh, asking for grants for wastewater and um, sanitation strategy. World Bank told Lagos State that, listen, you, if you improve water supply, there will be more wastewater. So you need to plan for wastewater. Mm. If people have access to water supply, then there will be more wastewater. And if you don't plan for wastewater, there will be more problem that will be catered for that you need to cater for. So we have to do the study on wastewater. And that's when they merge water, uh, uh, sewage department in Ministry of Environment with water, water corporation, mm -hmm. and move it to the, and so that the policy will cover that area in 2005. And between 2005, 2015, that's a 10-year strategic plan period. So we, what we need to ask, do you know the population? As at that time, and the population now, now. Mm -hmm. most people, there was 63 million people in Nigeria, 63 million people in Nigeria will look for water at all costs, either through Bowl, Sachet Water, Merua, or any other thing, because government could not provide it. And water but is many life. are providing water uh, for themselves, really. Yes, that's especially what I'm saying. Especially through Bowl. Yes. Mm. So now, they said you are regulating the issue of Bowl, mm. but you are not providing the alternative. For me to but Lagos State is doing something now through the World Bank. I think they are trying to meet uh, some area. I think Shuruilere is there, Yabai, Butemeta, uh, some part of Victoria Island, some part of uh, Ikeja. They are trying to do meet uh, so that because the commercialization in the uh, water policy sector of, uh, that was uh, in, uh, introduced in 2003, where they allow for privatization and commercialization of water for the population, because they find out that government alone cannot do it. And this is what they need to do, change the scope, of the thinking of, of the population. That, listen, these are no longer social service. Mm. You are buying water now. You see, we should just thank God that the issue of commercialization has helped reduce access to water. But to what extent, really? Because Let me tell you. Before, in the past, from we that study, knew about from that study, remember in those days, when you see a, a busted pipe from a drainage, people go there to go and drink to go and fetch water. When they take that water out, they drink it raw. That is mm. a source of waterborne diseases. So access to success water has helped us to reduce the infection of uh, 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 infectious diseases through water, through waterborne diseases. And that's what I mean by cholera, diarrhea, they has come down drastically because people now have access to potable water. But how water. safe now, are the, even sachet water? Even in, in all of those, the, the point there is, the water is also has been declared as, as the environmentalists are saying water should be an issue of human rights, not, not a commercial based thing. There are so many people who cannot even afford the uh, sachet water or table water as the case may be. So, and every human being 
should be entitled to water. Nobody can live without water. So if you can afford it, how, how, how do you survive? See, my brother, water cannot be classified under human rights. That they must Why not? provide it. Let me tell you one thing. The cost of treating public water is enormous. You understand? And I give you Lagos example. Lagos is spending more money to treat water than other states. Why? Because of the heavy pollution, industrial pollution. Water body is being mixed with uh, wastewater. So the hardness of water is high at the treatment plants. But people okay. are paying their taxes, so uh, resources should be available but are, to, but to they are, serve they are, them. There are all the amenities, infrastructure that mm -hmm. should be provided. So mm -hmm. if you need the water, the, the money you are using to invest in putting borehole, if you decide to pay uh, water corporation and they meter your house, mm. I still believe it's more economical than for you to be, to be doing. If you do collective treatment and distribute to millions of people, you make more money and you reduce the cost of individual treatment because it's, it's highly it's costlier for you to be treating your own individually than to be doing it collectively. Okay. So what the question is to ask, what is the percentage, what, what quantum of water do a single human being need a day? Just 25 liters. 6% of that goes for drinking. 5% go for domestic use, like brushing your teeth. The, the other one go for, for, uh, for bathing and other. So if we now look at population, and um, you multiply by individual usage of water, so you know if the deficit is there or we are. It is, and it's supposed to be about uh, 500 million gallons of water, really, of deficits in Lagos alone. Now, uh, talking about commercialization of water, especially uh, the rise of uh, sachet water around the country, a journalist uh, recently took samples of different sachet water to a laboratory, and she got uh, shocking results, really, that all these water sachets, uh, uh, the, water, the water content uh, had um, a coliform, pathogenic bacteria, yes, yes. high microbial levels, yes, acidity, yes. and yes. some objectionable materials yes. in the water. So then you wonder, is the government not even regulating uh, water sachet producers anymore? They regulate. Or at all? They regulate. But you know, there's nowhere in, in the country where people don't want to cut corner. Forgetting that not area of water. As a regulatory agency, you need to be stringent. You need to pass serious law and punitive measure for those who circumvent the standard of, that is laid down for the treatment of uh, commercial water. You understand what I'm saying? See, it's not only in Nigeria. It's everywhere. There was a time when I was in England. They did a survey. They found out that even the tap water is cleaner than the bottled water. Because everybody wants to make profit. So what you are saying is not new to me, because I know it's the practice worldwide somewhere. Some other people want to say, okay, I want to make my profit. Somebody, it's human error sometimes. You understand what I'm saying? So that is why we say you should promote the issue of the public sector commercializing the water, water infrastructure, and at the same time, making the money back. Because everybody, you will look for water at all costs. When you are thirsty, you will look for water. So you want to buy it. It's like waste management. Water and waste management, they have the same principle. Mm. Because if waste is decaying in, your, in front of your house, you will look for somebody, you will pay somebody to go and take it away. So the same thing is water, if you are testing. So that's why governments should give a clear uh, uh, policy that this is what we want to achieve. Yeah, why we are providing, even road, I used to say, why don't you toll road for me? If it's going to be okay for me, toll it and I'll pay. So that I'll, I'll apply. When I was coming up from Surulere, it took me about one hour to get there from Surulere to this to your station. Just because of one black spot at uh, Ojota here. So if I'm paying my money to pass an express, it's the same thing like paying the money to buy my water. And mm. I'll, but I'll but a lot water. of Nigerians <laughs> would, not, would, they would not accept the issue of tolling for them to have access to because they see it as a, a social amenity they exactly. are supposed to have access to. Tax. Yeah. Mm. I remember w those days we used to uh, grow up uh, you go to your kitchen, the water there, the water runs yes. everywhere. You yes. can just fetch and drink. It's the same thing you travel abroad in South Africa, United States, anywhere. You can fetch water straight from the tap and then you drink. Shouldn't that be the focus now uh, that Nigerian government should put in place? Yes. See, the water infrastructure facility we have right now is not adequate. Hmm. From investment profile, about $1.3 billion is required to put this infrastructure in place, according to World Bank report. 
the global norm is this. If you look at North America, they are the ones that have attained 100% in water supply to their citizens. Then about 80% for urban city water supply. Africa is still about between 50 and 60%. Lagos State currently has about 81.3% of quality of water supply to individual homes. And if you want to talk of access, access, access to water, you need to talk of quality and quantity. That is what we refer to as access to water. Mm. There is no point just taking water that is not clean, mm. or that is not portable for you to drink. Mm. So in terms of the yastic, to know that access to portable water, you talk of quantum and you talk of the quality. Mm. Now, Lagos State has attained close to 82.1% because they, they invest heavily in the treatment of this portable water where it is available. The one I don't want to believe from their statistics is that they have been able to cover 80% of their population. <laughs> maybe population that they, they serve. Maybe. No. Maybe population that they serve. <laughs> people who are metered or people who are on their network. Okay. Yes. But if government will not want to do the right thing, they should go back and start looking at the, uh, the, the drawing board. How do I link Victoria Island, mm. Lekki, Connecting new this places. way? Then maybe, it's going to, maybe by building mini water works again. Mm. Because we have several mini water works. And other have been added that augment the initial uh, 45 million gallons per day, 70 million gallons per day. Now Lagos is now currently delivering 215 million gallons per day to his customer. So that is an encouragement. Okay. But they need to now look for other area that, like, like Ikorodu now. Yeah. Ikorodu has a mini water work, but how many people are there? Is it serving? Have access there. Mm. Because of the new, uh, so demand, yes, you have said, population keep increasing. These are the challenges of the urban, of the uh, mega city that we're talking about. All right, before, because of time, uh, quickly, let's look at the health implications, really, oh. of a lack of portable water in any society, really. There are deaths recorded oh. every year, not just in Lagos, across yeah. the country. Yeah. From my survey, or from research so far, water kills even more than war. Mm. Mm. Lack of water kills even more than war. And if, on a yearly basis, infant mortality, Children under five, 600,000 die of water related diseases yearly. That should be an alarming situation for mm -hmm. us. You understand know what I'm saying? So the issue of water should be on the bouncing burner of any government. All right. I, I take that as the hook line this morning. The mm. issue of water should be in the front burner of any government. Mm. And I think local governments, state government, and the federal government all have roles to play in here. Yes. Thank you very much, uh, Ido Salau, environmentalist, for joining us this morning. You're welcome. Much, uh, Ido Salau, environmentalist, for joining us this morning. You're welcome. Thank you. Right, that's where we come to the end of today's edition of the program.